Okay, let's get started with the second session. Uh, welcome everyone. My name is Chris Cronin. Uh, I'm a member of the SketchUp team and it is my pleasure to introduce Jim Leggett, a longtime friend of the SketchUp team, architect, FAIA, national expert in visual communication, and somebody who's really pioneered some um, really innovative, a really innovative approach to hand drawing and 3D modeling. Um, Jim's also the author of Drawing Shortcuts, and this is gonna be an excellent presentation. So please um, give a warm round of applause to Mr. Jim Leggett. All right, thanks. <laughs> I, uh, uh, the, the slides that I'm gonna show you today in 45 minutes, there's a lot of slides and I'm gonna move really quickly. And I just, uh, uh, we're all visually oriented people. So you're gonna see these slides pretty quickly. You'll understand what I'm going through. And then I'll move on to the next slide. I, I'm a true believer, the more slides I can get in front of you, the more inspired you'll be. The, uh, uh, what I've done is I've really gone around and I've, uh, I've asked a lot of students, I've asked a lot of professionals, uh, what is so important for them in the visual communication uh, and their projects. And, and we're all faced with so, so many needs of, of getting information to our clients, get, getting information out there much quicker and more efficiently uh, in less time. And, uh, and so what I've done over a long period of time is I've developed new efficiency methods of drawing. And, uh, but going back to 1955, I was uh, integrating hand drawing and tools uh, as a five-year-old. We did it with television. We did it with John Nagy and his Learn to Draw techniques, a live television program where we all had our Learn to Draw kits. But the real interaction with technology was right here with Winky Dink and me. Uh, it was a program in which we had clear vinyl that we stuck on the black and white television set and there were dots that we connected with grease crayons and uh, built a little bridge and saved Winky across the canyon. Well, that was technology in 1955. It went away pretty quickly because we, were, we skipped the vinyl and we were just drawing right on the television set. And, of course, our parents thought we were going to go blind sitting so close to the television, which we, which we were. Well, I recently did a, a bit of an analysis to try to figure out where was I when I really started getting into the visualization in college. This is what I look like. And then where we are today and, and beyond, uh, back in 2012. And I noticed there were some big jumps in decades of technology and, and really significant jumps and but between 1992 and 2002, and especially at 2002, big, big jumps in how we design, how we visually communicate. 92 was when most architectural schools stopped teaching drawing. It was when Form Z was invented. AutoCAD had a global, um, uh, it had a lot of uh, traction on the global um, market as a production software, and between Form Z and AutoCAD schools started to teach that and they started to drop the traditional hand drawing courses. In 1992 was also when Quark Express, the desktop publishing came on board and, in, and it had a good solid run in about 10 years. Uh, and then in 2002, 2001 was a significant jump in technology and that's when things really took off. That's when Adobe Suites uh, CS1 came out, Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator. It was a cork killer. Cork went away. It's when the digital camera came out in 2001, 2002, SketchUp came on board right at that period of time. Big game changers. The LCD screen, that's when we started seeing less big, huge monitors and a lot of flat screen monitors, a lot of uh, laptops came on board. Digital camera invented in 2002. All of that in the past 10 years, 12 years. And now in 2012, things jumped again. We started to see um, a lot more cloud technology software has really, really taken off and has and is evolved and matured. And the digital camera and the tablet technology has, has taken over. And in 10 short years, the traditional digital camera has, has almost become obsolete because we're all taking pictures with our iPhones and digital uh, media. So I'm going to back up a little bit in time and talk about kind of how do we kind of communicate our ideas uh, in, in the steps in which we do that from the first steps of the big idea generation of, of really getting that idea down on paper quickly in terms of a napkin sketch. And you can see right here just these little scribbles 
do mean an awful lot in the development of an idea and getting these scribbles in front of clients can really, really advance an idea very, very quickly. The initial uh, one-page sketch that an architect did of this housing complex, eventually it turned into a final drawing. So those big idea, big idea generations can happen over numerous sketches as, as, a, as an idea evolves from the very first sketch to a final sketch. That's how these, the, the design process happens with traditional hand drawing, getting those ideas down on paper. Uh, a ten, it doesn't have to take a long time. Uh, this is a 10 minute sketch a friend of mine in Las Vegas did. He came back a little bit later on and developed something that took him a little bit more time to do. But he got something like this in front of a client. In 10 minutes he was able to start getting that di di design dialogue going. And it's not pretty. It just gets the basic form, but it tells an awful lot. And you can eventually develop it into a little bit more of a finer drawing or a sketch. And in this situation, a series of sketches all trying to um, tell the story of what, what one might go through uh, with an aquarium experience. Um, concept visualization is where you basically are now beginning to formulate ideas of what, uh, what the design might be. And you start telling stories. And those stories come about in a series of different sketches all talking about uh, the story of going through, in this case, a very, very large commercial mall. Uh, that initial sketch that was done in a very short period of time eventually was developed into a little bit more of a formal drawing. And I'll show you these steps a little bit later on as we go really fast. Concept visualization, uh, Frank Gratton, an architect in Denver, uh, a number of sketches that he developed for a resort. None of these sketches that Frank put together were based on any kind of modeling or any kind of photography. They're all done from imagination. Um, but you can see and the, the importance of that very first sketch and how it can get an idea down. It might be annotated and eventually it turns into a final model. Now all of this, what, I, what I'm showing right now, eventually we fold in 3D modeling, and that's where we get into design development. I can get into 3D modeling earlier, but in this case here, in design development, now you've got an idea, you've got a, like say, an urban plan uh, going, you develop a model for it, and in this case here, you can see the model is a very simple massing model, and then what I did is I printed that out onto paper, and then drew right on top of that print with pen and ink, and added all of that entourage, and eventually, added some color marker and some colored pencil. And that was a, 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 a simple first step in what I call the print composite uh, modeling, print composite visualization, where you're actually drawing right on a print. Um, and then finally, uh, as we get into a much more of a sophisticated presentation mode, uh, there I, I get into modeling. Here's a SketchUp model that I did that I actually transformed into a digital watercolor. And I'll explain that process a little bit later. But it's a straightforward SketchUp model that I printed out and then I added some handwork to it, scanned that uh, artwork, and then added a filter to it to give it a little bit more of a watercolor filter. But de design presentations can be a hybrid. This is a, um, a hybrid uh, sketch that I did that integrates photography, SketchUp modeling, and hand drawing. So this is a digital hybrid, and this is what I'm going to really explain in more detail as we get further and further into technology, and then uh, uh, merging hand drawing and technology. And also, don't be afraid to present uh, uh, your idea, your design concept, in just pure model form. And in this case, it is a straight, straightforward um, SketchUp model of a a uh, three block section of, uh, of uh, an urban design that I'm working on currently and what that might look like with uh, all of the different components and activated street scene. And then of course, uh, one step further is the photorealistic uh, representation, uh, a SketchUp model that I put together uh, and then I turned that over to and outsourced it to professional renderers uh, and then they, they take it from there using uh, uh, different techniques in Photoshop to get to that final rendering. So you can see uh, a step in the process, uh, a block model just to get the basic forms of the building, a little bit more of a finished model that I put together, and then turn that over 
to the professional renderers and outsourced it to get to this final presentation. So um, now the drawing basics, the tools and the strategies for putting drawings together, um, one, one method is just simply the observation drawing method. Uh, it's a sketchbook. Uh, here's a friend of mine, in, uh, uh, Terry Brown, who always takes his, uh, uh, his sketchbook around with him and he is do does these marvelous uh, pen and ink drawings using just a standard rollerball pen that he uh, uh, gets from Office Depot. Um, observation drawings, if you're on vacation, don't hesitate to uh, take out a sketchbook and a uh, glass of wine, of course, and then see what you can cook up. Uh, this is an, if Steve Oles is here. Steve, are you here? Yeah, he's in the back. This is one of Steve's drawings right here from one of his vacations uh, in Europe. The, um, another uh, is, another t drawing type is the imagination drawing. Uh, this is that sketch that you do uh, from mind's eye. It's on a blank piece of paper. You're not tracing over any photography or any model. You're just basically coming up and cooking up an idea of what something might look like uh, from your mind's eye. It can be a, a very quick sketch or it can be something a lot more sophisticated like this. Uh, this was a drawing that I did uh, for a fake ski resort in Southern California of which you parked in the shade, took an elevator to the top and you skied down a plastic ski slope that had actually dotted lines on it and you got a half day ski lesson and a half day surfing lesson at the same time. <laughs> And that's all from imagination, of course. <laughs> Who knows? Another one is uh, the overlay and trace method. Uh, photography, overlay and trace uh, a sketch of model. It's a simple three-step process. You start with your base image. Uh, you blow that up to, say, 8 and a half by 11. Trace over the top of that. Work up all of your detail, all your context, your graphics uh, in red pencil on a tracing, on tracing paper. And then you eventually put another piece of tracing paper over the top of that and do a pen and ink drawing, and then color that in with marker and colored pencil. Simple overlay and trace. Nice method of being able to show a client your a before and after. They get the photograph, they understand where they are, and then you show them the sketch. It could be something as loose as this one here. It's just a simple pen and ink drawing with a little bit of color marker. Uh, and then they show the two together, show them both together so the client really understands uh, where you're going with the design. Uh, it could be over a model. This is uh, early, early days pre-SketchUp uh, where we were working uh, solely in AutoCAD, 3D AutoCAD, and then I would take that, print over the top, uh, uh, sketch over the top of that on tracing paper, add some annotation, a little bit of a splash of color, and really get uh, some ideas kind of cooking with the client without a lot of uh, time investment. Uh, Ray Brown out of uh, out of Memphis, he, uh, he, can do, uh, he can take a simple SketchUp block model and then get it to this level in a relatively short amount of time. He's a, a seasoned, seasoned architect, and uh, I don't think I could do this. I would probably want to take and develop my model a little bit more detailed than what uh, Ray does, but uh, simple overlay and trace. Here it is again on a large urban project uh, where the block model has lines in it to represent the floor to floor heights in these large uh, buildings. But again, I printed it out about 8 and a half by 11, 11 by 17, and then sketched over the top of that. Scrubbed it in, very loose uh, drawing technique just to get an idea across of what this very large urban park might look like in that city. So um, I constantly talk about markers and colored pencils. Uh, there are four basic markers out there. I const I'm always using the uh, chart pack 80 marker, and now I've actually gone into using some of the Copic markers. Very, very big difference between prices here. This is a Copic is about seven dollars, and the markers, uh, the, the 80 markers, is about half that price. So for students, uh, I'm really steering them in the direction of the the the, um, the 80 marker. But it's great to just put together a simple line drawing. It doesn't have to be a lot of detail, and then just put a splash of color on top of that. And uh, has this ever happened to anybody? Has, have you ever had that happen? It only happens once. It ruined a good, a good cup of Starbucks. Of course, we had to redraw the whole thing, but it's the way it goes. Um, nice thing about markers is you can color the back side and the front side of tracing paper. So if you really want to build up your colors, you can just go ahead and flip it over and color on the back side. I use this a lot. This is a recent drawing that I did uh, based on a uh, 
kind of a Google aerial photograph, and then it was trying to just illustrate a lot of infill buildings and a lot of park development at the confluence of two rivers. Just basic pen and ink drawing on tracing paper with marker coloring. Um, at high altitude, tomorrow, if we're going we're gonna, to, any of you taking the workshop tomorrow, we are at super high altitude. And if you have markers, uh, that are brand new. These markers are actually uh, filled at low altitude and then they're capped at low altitude. So at high altitude, you open that marker up and there's a good chance it'll explode on you. <laughs> so we'll watch that tomorrow during the workshop. <laughs> this was one of my students. Colored pencils are great, um, great technique. Uh, uh, there are, uh, I tend to uh, use colored pencils as an enhancement rather than the sole coloring of, of an image. Uh, around the world, there are a lot of uh, illustrators working solely. This is a uh, gentleman down in Indonesia that does these beautiful drawings in, in colored pencil. He doesn't use marker at all. Um, here's, an, uh, here's an illustrator out of Canada that does a very aggressive use of, uh, of colored pencil, very, very animated, very colorful, very contrasty. It's a beautiful work. And uh, of course, it's Steve Ohl. Steve's in the back here. And Steve is a legendary uh, illustrator. Uh, he did all of I.M. Pei's illustrations, and he has this marvelous technique that is a very stipple-like technique. It's all colored pencil. And, uh, but I'll point out, too, that uh, the merging of hand drawing and technology, Steve was one of the pioneers in doing, working with uh, other uh, uh, modelers out of Boston and so he was working carefully with the modelers doing 3D mock-ups of these buildings and then uh, color studies and shadow studies as well in the computer before he ever developed his final rendering. So those are beautiful drawings. The, um, but the marking, uh, taking and mixing pencil and colored markers is a really great tool because you can lay down a lot of color with colored marker and then you just add a lot of entourage and a lot of texture using colored pencils. So you can basically get your color down uh, with marker and then uh, take some different colored blue pencils and then get that uh, gradation in the sky with blue. Um, you can do that on a simple scale or on a grand scale. In this case, a very, very large drawing, uh, an urban design drawing. Bas basic lay down of, 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 of colored uh, marker, but then you can see how I've enhanced it especially in some of these grassy areas and these close-up areas with colored pencils. So that's a nice way of doing it. Perspectives, we used to, uh, before 3D modeling came about, we used to really rely on perspective charts and construction methods. Uh, no longer, now we can do all of our modeling. Uh, in SketchUp, we can do all of our uh, kind of our engineering of perspectives uh, with photography. And of course, kind of keeping in mind uh, whether it's a single uh, single point perspective or, or a uh, two point perspective or a three point perspective, especially when you're dealing with a large urban space that you're trying to illustrate. Um, those are choices that you kind of be aware of. In this SketchUp model here, the one point perspective kind of gives you that eye level. It gives you that kind of that simple, basic elevation view of the building. But the two point perspective kind of gives you a lot more of the shape of the building. And the three-point perspective gives you the context of where that building sits on the site. So those are kind of decisions, strategic decisions I make all the time um, before I start a project as to how, how what it's going, what it's going to, what kind of perspective, how big is it going to be? Uh, if it's a large urban project, I might be drawing very, very large. For the most part, I'm trying to keep my drawings at about eight and a half by eleven or smaller, so that I can scan them get those JPEGs off to a client quickly. Here's, a, here's a, a friend of mine that did a perspective and a building section on a three by five uh, card. He went ahead and blew that up and then colored that in and showed it to the client. Um, the shape of the drawing can be uh, horizontal to really um, um, emphasize a horizon or vertical according to what you're trying to portray or a square shape. What I'm doing more often is I'm actually strategically thinking about um, what is the final format of my presentation and, and shaping the drawing to fit the final format of the presentation? That uh, I, I rarely ever do anything in a vertical format or anything that has a very, very long stretched out format. Everything's much more six by nine, six by 12 format. Uh, the detail that I put into drawings is, is uh, 
uh, very loose. Um, I shy away from any great detail. Uh, it bogs me down greatly, and it also just wastes a tremendous amount of time. So I try to keep things as loose as possible in the early, especially in the early design stages. Uh, the composition of any drawing. In this case, I consciously loaded this drawing up with four big, big pieces of information to try to emphasize the silliness of this roadside uh, attraction. The, uh, but one of the things that I'm, I'm seeing more and more of that's so important for all of us to be aware of is, is how we put um, context and entourage into anything that we do, whether it's a pure SketchUp model or a hybrid drawing, or um, uh, try to t look through that list or have your own list of what are those elements that you can put into a drawing that's going to really give it that scale, that humanity, that activity, um, and give it more information than what a straightforward SketchUp or a straightforward uh, building would give you. Uh, drawing people, cars, trees, very many choices. You can draw people from imagination. You can trace them from entourage files. You can integrate photography into your image and or a combination of the two. In this case, this illustrator from California, uh, the, her uh, people in the foreground were traced from photography and the people in the background were done from imagination. Uh, sketch of modeling, you can work with 2D or 3D components, fantastic. I'm always trying to load up my models with uh, SketchUp people so that I can give it that scale when I actually get into the hybrid uh, visualization. In this case here, this is a simple overlay and trace that I did from a photograph of the street scene. I was adding some of the, um, the landscape elements to what was a very bland and lifeless streetscape. But what I did is I actually built a little SketchUp model and uh, basically uh, put, these, put the people into the SketchUp model and matched up the photo and the SketchUp view. And then I just traced the people to just get them into this picture. The, um, uh, the illustrator out of California that did this one probably had a combination of a lot of photography that she integrated into this illustration to get those people in there. Um, what I'm doing now is in SketchUp, uh, I'll start with a basic SketchUp model, as you see right here, and it's a combination of, of some 3D people in the background, you can see here, and then in the foreground I had uh, some photography uh, SketchUp components that were from photographs, and then I integrated them into uh, the digital watercolor. And again, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, um, this case here, the SketchUp model that I built, and this is another digital watercolor. You can see by the texture and the kind of the feel of it, it's almost painted like. Um, every single person in here was a SketchUp component that I loaded up into the model and um, uh, composed it carefully, added some photography into it as well. So that, in this case, it was a um, pretty detailed SketchUp model in order to get to this uh, level of, uh, of illustration for a fundraising of a museum. Cars, you can draw from imagination. You can trace them from photography. I'm doing more and more of integrating uh, SketchUp components into any of my visualizations. This is a SketchUp model of which uh, I carefully uh, placed all of the cars into the composition, all of the people into the composition, and then basically started with the, uh, a print of a SketchUp model. And then I just went ahead on top of that print and uh, added the illustrated line work with pen and ink, and then added some colored uh, marker on top of that. Same thing here. This is a kind of slightly different technique. This was a, an a, 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 where I took the SketchUp model and I printed it in color and then I went over the top of it with uh, tracing paper and then I went ahead and, and illustrated it with pen and ink and added some um, colored marker and some colored pencil. And then I scanned both the print and the overlay together. It's a, it's a, a scan composite method, and I'll, show, I'll get into that in a little bit more detail, where the, uh, the SketchUp model begins to ghost through the tracing paper, and you get this kind of composite of both the SketchUp model and the hand drawing on the top. Trees are the same way. Uh, you can draw them from imagination, or you can get them from uh, SketchUp. So I'll move right into modeling. Uh, before SketchUp uh, came about, uh, in the early 90s, late 90s, we were modeling with uh, 
AutoCAD and Form Z. Form Z didn't get us that far, so I basically had to start with somewhat of a blank canvas for the form, from the Form Z model, and then go ahead and develop the entourage and the detail from there in an overlay and trace. Same with the uh, uh, AutoCAD model, a very kind of plain and, and uh, lifeless, and then went ahead and developed all from uh, kind of overlay and trace. So I still do that a lot. If I'm working up a, a, a concept, in this case here, an entertainment uh, uh, project, uh, the model itself could be relatively uh, simple, a block model, and then I'll put a piece of tracing paper over the top of that and uh, annotate it, add some notes, uh, add some color uh, with markers, and then uh, come up with a quick idea uh, for this entertainment center. Um, in, 19, in 2001, 2002, um, that's when Joe and uh, Brad uh, developed SketchUp. This was my very first SketchUp model. I went ahead and imported a site plan and I had no clue what I was doing, and I had no idea why it was so purple. <laughs> I just kind of left it at that and said, okay, that's my model. Um, but things, everyone has begun to really integrate uh, hand drawing into the SketchUp process. Ter Terry Leonard out of uh, Charlotte will develop his own uh, kind of blocks, uh, building components. He'll craft together that, uh, that village scene and then he'll just go ahead and trace, print it out, trace over the top of it in pen and ink, and then add a splash of colored marker to it. And he gets these marvelous uh, illustrations. Uh, in this case here, it was a large, uh, big model for um, uh, an air show, of which it was so detailed, uh, I, f I realized it was good enough to just export some high resolution images and then show those to the client and I was able to communicate the big concepts of this air show with a simple and straightforward uh, uh, export of the SketchUp model. Um, in large urban projects, we integrated, uh, these are projects that I worked on with Dan Tall together when we were uh, doing a lot of uh, international projects in the Middle East. Um, SketchUp model that helped us, it's a very straightforward, simple block model uh, with some patterns uh, on the different elevations, not too many uh, no, it's not tricky to put this together, but it helped us uh, really craft the, uh, and sculpt the skyline of this large uh, development in the Middle East. And also, from this SketchUp model, we were able to give it, hand it over to the renderers, and they could do the, um, the final uh, photorealistic renderings of that straight from my SketchUp models. Here's a Dan Tall model uh, from one of those projects. Uh, uh, and that was, the, this one ended up on the cover of his first book. Uh, but Dan and I worked closely together, kind of crafting buildings and putting together site plans. And in this case here, it was one of the first projects where um, an entire landscape design concept was uh, presented to the client entirely in SketchUp model form. No drawings other than SketchUp models, and the client really loved it because it was representing all of this uh, in 3D, and it was a very, very effective tool. Now, uh, SketchUp strategies. Um, the, um, if I'm trying to get to a final product, in this case, the, uh, uh, the interior, a sketch of an interior of a lodge, I went ahead and built a stage set model. I just build what I can see and nothing else. So don't think in terms of building a huge model, just build, think of yourselves as a stage designer and just build what you see and nothing else. Or a massing model. Don't build a lot of detail into it, just get the blocks put together, put together at the right scale and the right height and then use that massing model to develop your final model. And this strategy here, this is one that Dan and I did together where we worked hand in hand I call it from the surface to the screen, screen to the surface, back and forth, where we ca I came up with a, a quick sketch of that street scene, and then Dan went ahead and built a quick model of what this would look like. We showed this model to the client. The client wanted uh, to put the street back in, uh, but loved the water feature, so Dan modified the model, went ahead and crafted that, and then I took that and then went, did a one, uh, an overlay uh, tweaking it with some more furniture, some signage, some other things into the model, and then Dan built the final model right here, that's the final presentation model, and then handed that over to the renderers for a, a photorealistic rendering. This is, and this is going on today, this is a quick uh, street scene that I put together just a month ago for a client to kind of understand 
what uh, a street might look like if we were to um, get rid of some parallel parking, widen the sidewalk, put some outside dining in, and some furniture, and really tr change an existing urban street uh, in the, uh, Glenwood Springs, Colorado. Now, you can get uh, imaging from the internet. In this case here, I developed an entire drawing straight from a lot of images that I, uh, thematic images that I pulled off of the internet. And uh, Google Earth is another marvelous technique of being able to uh, start with a 3D uh, view from Google Earth, and then I printed it out and traced over the top of it. I also took some street views from the same block and from Google Street View, traced over the top of them and to show what it looked like if we were to widen the sidewalk a little bit. And again, these before pictures and these after pictures are really excellent tools in uh, showing a client and getting a client uh, excited. In this case here, digital photography inside of a, an old mill building, a sketching over the top of that photograph and then coming up with a uh, concept for what it might look like with uh, uh, turning that uh, old space into a, a coffee shop. Uh, great tools in urban, urban design where I'm using photography and uh, the before and after of what it might look like enhancing a street view. The, um, uh, a friend of mine who lives in Hong Kong uh, took a photograph from one of the higher views overlooking Hong Kong Harbor and in one eight hour span he was able to go to a, a develop a concept, refine the concept and then develop this uh, kind of a hybrid with photography and hand drawing and uh, showed this uh, to city council uh, to try to uh, stop uh, or try to help uh, guide the concept designed for the harbor of, in Hong Kong. And now we've got the interactive monitors that we're working with, the tablet technology, um, uh, drawing on an iPad. One of the very first exposures I had was a, in 2001 when a friend of mine showed up with a Sony Clie and he was drawing on that uh, uh, handheld. Um, but now with the uh, Wacom tablets and, and any of the tablets, the I iPad, uh, I found uh, great joy in being able to kind of import uh, line drawings, add color to those line drawings using, in this, in this case, a Wacom Cintiq. Uh, and then also digital painting. I can take a, um, a daytime sketch that I did and I can just, oh, in Photoshop, just add a layer of gray on top of that and then erase that gray and I can, in less than five minutes, I can turn a daytime into a nighttime image just in, uh, in Photoshop. So that's, I mean, these are great tools uh, using the interactive monitors, uh, using the Cintiq to be able to uh, accurately be able to scrub through here and erase out pieces and parts to tear the night's uh, daytime scene into a nighttime scene. And now to the hybrid, kind of the composite, uh, the heart of what I'm, I'm really um, so excited about in, in, in developing kind of new um, techniques in, in hybrid visualization. And I've tried to organize it into uh, kind of several different categories. And this first category is the composite scan method. The composite scan is where I am working with a printout of a SketchUp model. And I'll overlay the top of that printout with tracing paper and I will actually do a drawing. In this case here, you can see I'm drawing, really putting in the detail in this plaza. Now, the drawing itself is okay as it's as a standalone, but what I did is I scanned the two of them together and with that I was able to gain a lot more information about the background and the context. So there's a hierarchy of the design of the plaza but by scanning the two drawings together, I'm, I'm able to give it more context and scale. And your brain begins to s kind of fill in the pieces of, okay, I see what he's doing with this, so I'm only can, I can only imagine that that's probably what they're doing with, with the rest. So I'm able to get a little bit more mileage out of a drawing than just the straightforward drawing. In this case here, same thing, same methodology. And uh, starting with a printout, now with the overlay, what I've discovered is that the SketchUp model, the blue of the sky is showing through the tracing paper and the shadows are showing up too. And what I, can, what I discovered is I could hit it with some white pencil and the white pencil highlights actually popped 
the mullions and pop the buildings. I could scrub that building with a little white pencil and now I'm able to bring up the highlights of the building. So in this case here, same thing. The tracing paper ghosts the model in the background, that simple SketchUp model, and then I add the detail in the foreground so you can really kind of with that double exposure of the composite, I can really get a lot of mileage out of that. Here's the original uh, SketchUp view that I did, and then there's the straightforward uh, drawing without uh, the two of them combined, and here it is combined. You can see now that white building is popping out against the dark blue sky, and I'm getting more kind of color and shadow into the image. Here's a step-by-step -step from a larger project. Uh, I started with a block model. The block model kind of got me past the client approval of, yes, this is the view that I want of this waterfront development. So from that point, I went ahead and I built the model. This is the same model as that building. I added a little bit of detail to the rear models and then put some people, some boats, and uh, added a lot more of a detailed model into this building. And so this was the base view. That's the pure SketchUp export. Then what I did is I, uh, I traced over the top of that and uh, with a line drawing and colored that line drawing in with colored marker and some colored pencil. And this is the two of them scanned together. So you can see the white buildings in the background popping out against the, the blue sky and all that detail. And so you can see this is that hybrid, uh, kind of that double exposure of the SketchUp model showing through the shadows of the SketchUp model. I'm letting that happen. I'm adding a little bit of extra line work, a little bit of white line work, and then really focusing all my illustration in the foreground right there, and then a little splash of colored marker and colored pencil. Um, the composite scan drawing, this is back to that same method of, of taking that SketchUp, uh, that Google Earth view. In this case here, this one little site right here, the architects inserted a new building into that SketchUp view, into that Google Earth view. And then from that new building, I was able to trace, do a, do a red line mock-up, just getting all my little details worked out in pencil first, and then the overlay right here. And this is a straightforward pencil, or the, the pen and ink drawing with colored marker, but then here it is uh, composite scanned on top of the original image so that you get this hierarchy of the drawing of what I'm really trying to emphasize, but this gives it the context and places this into the context of the downtown scene. Now, that's the composite scan. The print composite, after I was kind of wasting, feeling like I was wasting time going in that direction, I went ahead and thought, okay, well, let me just print the SketchUp view, lighten it up, and then draw right smack on the print. Now, this was uh, one of my first uh, uh, attempts at it, where I printed it out and then just added, scrubbed it up with a little bit of white colored pencil and some colored markers, a little bit of pen and ink, and I was able to really take that SketchUp model, layer on some hand drawing, and give it that um, humanity and that character, and then uh, present that to the client. So this is uh, a great technique where I'm, I'm printing it out at home on a large format printer. This is only about 11 by 17 inches. I'll lighten up the image and print it onto a kind of a textured or a, a toothy paper. It's a printed, it's a, um, um, uh, coated bond paper. Uh, that paper has a toothy surface, so it really accepts the colored pencil really well. So instead of showing the client the straightforward SketchUp view that I did here, I went ahead and just spent 10 minutes or so adding a splash of colored marker and a little bit of colored pencil to just soften it up and give it a little bit more of that in-progress look. Some clients take and they're scared when they see a SketchUp model, they think you pretty much finished the design. And so by backing off that a little bit and adding a little bit of, of, of pencil work, you can take that SketchUp and, and give it that, uh, that real hand-drawn look. So literally 99% of all of this, or 90% of this, is all SketchUp model. And then another 5 to 10% is the hand-drawing on top of that. So I'll take a model like this, and a view from this middle section right here, I'll print this out. It doesn't have any edges on it. It's all just faces and shadows. And then I'll go ahead and draw right on top of the print with pen and ink, and then add a splash of, of colored marker and colored pencil 
to really soften it up. It's a great technique, this uh, print composite uh, drawing. Same, same project, different, uh, more of a street view, uh, but it's taking that SketchUp model and printing it out and really going really, really far with it. Um, in this case here, uh, I actually built the model out of just little sections of buildings, little component kit of parts. I assembled them uh, and then created this drawing from that, and that's what it looks like. Kind of the SketchUp model kind of ghosting through and uh, with a hand drawing to enhance it on the top. Same thing here, this is the cover of Drawing Shortcuts, the basic uh, SketchUp model, enhanced it, or I modified it, uh, lightened it up, because I'm adding color back to it, so I actually lighten up the print, and then adds the colored marker and the colored pencil to it. And you can really see that's the basic SketchUp, SketchUp model, but with all of the handwork on top of that, it really does look handcrafted, and that's the kind of technique that uh, uh, is really effective in presentations. Um, I took a photograph here with that toothy surface of that uh, uh, coated paper, that Epson paper that I'm using, and uh, it takes colored pencils so well that it almost looks like a pastel drawing by the time I'm done with it. So I was kind of playing around with that kind of fine art uh, a photograph and uh, working it up with colored pencil and uh, straightforward graphite pencil and colored marker and then uh, filtering it in Photoshop to get this sort of uh, digital watercolor technique straight from a photograph. Um, digital painting, it's a friend of mine in the East Coast that uh, uh, this is his first uh, kind of hybrid drawing where the basic uh, drawing itself is a pen and ink drawing. Uh, it is a uh, ha uh, hand colored with uh, watercolor. But this case here, he went ahead and he added the sky in Photoshop. So this was kind of the first kind of, his first kind of dip into the hybridization of adding Photoshop, and that's uh, a lot of professional illustrators will really start getting into that uh, deeply, uh, doing a lot of digital painting. Uh, Kirk Fromm, who's attended SketchUp base camps in the past, he'll take architectural uh, views and he'll go from there to this with all digital painting. Uh, beautiful work. Here's an architect out of uh, Louisiana. Uh, he starts with a SketchUp model, he'll draw over the top of that, and he'll take his drawing and then just basically add blocks of color, simple, simple coloring in Photoshop, and very, very effective, almost cartooning uh, the color into his drawings. Very, very beautiful kind of drawings and beautiful coloring. Um, I've dabbled with pure digital painting using the Cintiq. In this case here, I drew the entire image. I started with a uh, SketchUp model, and then I did the entire drawing uh, with uh, the stylus pen, and I colored the whole uh, aerial perspective in with digital painting, and uh, eventually uh, printed it out, and I th it still was a little flat, and so I went ahead and I just added a little bit of colored pencil to, uh, to soften it up. Um, so I'm still kind of a work in progress trying to sort this out, but some people have it figured out really well. JJ Zanetta out of the East Coast starts, he'll, he'll do a um, SketchUp model, trace over the top of it, line drawing. Then he'll start to digitally paint it, layering in his blocks of basic color first. And then from there, he'll go ahead and start modeling the color, modeling the sky, adding textures. You can see how beautifully textured uh, the, the grassy areas are. He's adding a lot more depth and shadows to the trees and variations. And so that's the final kind of digital painting that JJ did. Um, one of the great illustrators right now is uh, Scott Lockhart, or Kirby Lockhart's son, who uh, starts with SketchUp models, does a lot of uh, either hand drawing or digital drawing on top of that, and then he does digital painting. Uh, in this case, a much more loose, uh, loosely crafted uh, digital painting job. In this, in this illustration that he did here, much more finely illustrated, uh, beautiful, beautiful craftsman and doing uh, great work, but that's all digital painting. He's doing it all with a Wacom tablet. He's not even using a Cintiq. And uh, here's um, Kirk Fromm. This is 100% digital painting based on a SketchUp model. Uh, professional uh, watercolorists will start with a SketchUp model. In this case, I built the model. Uh, uh, the illustrator went ahead and traced it, and then he went ahead and he printed the uh, line drawing onto watercolor paper, and then it did the watercolor painting. So uh, um, a lot of illustrators are now 
even with these 100% watercolor paintings, they're now scanning them and they're actually doing some post-production uh, tweaking in Photoshop uh, after the fact. Um, and then my SketchUp modeling, the digital watercolor process, um, I found that uh, uh, if I can spend the extra time, and it doesn't take much time to go from a basic SketchUp export and uh, using the plugin, in this case shader light, uh, to get the, um, the reflections in the glass to get a better quality of shadow and the reflections in the water. I'll start here and uh, I'll b start crafting a digital water watercolor from that point. So here's an example of how I did it. Uh, this is a uh, stage set model. So it's a fake model. It's just a building front and just the, uh, the ground plane. So I started with this fake model, even floating some trees in order to cast shadows strategically over the hot tub. And I arrive at my original SketchUp view. So this is the base view from SketchUp. I then took this into shader light. Now notice the water, the SketchUp water from shader light. So here I am processing the, uh, uh, the image. And now in shader light, I've got a better kind of, of modeling of the reflections, a better quality of light, and a better reflection in the water. So I started here. I printed it out light. And then I went over that with marker and a very hard pencil and arrived at the final artwork. Now you see how pale the artwork is. I did that on purpose. And then I scanned it, and then in Photoshop, I tweaked it and added that watercolor filter to get that true watercolor kind of appearance. So it looks very painted from there to there. So I'm really boosting the levels and boosting the contrast. And the, uh, the watercolor filter takes all those dabs of the marker and they, give it a, they rough them up and they give them a little bit of a dark edge around the outside. So you can see in this case here that the left side of this image is the basic SketchUp model but the right side is the digital watercolor. You can see how that really enhances the image an awful lot. So these are our experiments in taking SketchUp models and then and producing, this is just for the fun of it, producing a SketchUp uh, a digital watercolor from SketchUp models. Digital watercolor from SketchUp models. You can probably recognize most of these uh, components too. But there's the SketchUp model. There's the rendered version of it in shader light. And here it is finalized in the uh, digital watercolor, blown way up. So these are all examples of that. Taking a SketchUp model of the building, building, uh, uh, composing the entire image, and then going through that same process and then creating that final. This is uh, an interior as well. I got all the lighting effects from shader light on an interior model, but then the same process of developing the digital watercolor all from SketchUp. So it's a very effective tool. Here's a step-by-step. -step. There's the basic SketchUp model that I built. And then here it is, the model. Here's the rendered version of the model with shader light. And then the step-by-step -step going from marker, pencil, and then the, the basic uh, image filtered. And there it is with the watercolor filter on top of that. So really effective tool. And I'm just really excited about kind of playing around with this. It can be a large kind of urban project doing the same process from the model to the de digital watercolor. Um, it can be, here's a hybrid. Now the digital montage is yet one step further where uh, it's a combination of hand drawing, photography, uh, Photoshop, um, SketchUp modeling. Um, this is an example of that from an architect down in San Antonio. Um, there's an architect out of, uh, the, uh, out of uh, the West Coast that is combining uh, photography and digital painting and SketchUp modeling all in this digital montage. Beautiful, beautiful work. Here's another one from Kirk Fromm out of the East Coast. A lot of photography and uh, SketchUp components and, uh, and then SketchUp modeling all in this hybrid. And a lot of digital painting on top of that. Beautiful work that some of these professionals are doing. Um, here's an example where I took a photograph I did a digital drawing from the photograph in a Cintiq, so it's, a, it's a, uh, all done with a stylus pen, and then I combined uh, uh, some other images, on t uh, combined the two together. Um, this is uh, Scott Lockhart again. He started with a photograph of a street scene, then he went ahead and did an overlay drawing, combined the drawing and the photograph together, and then uh, uh, finished the rendering off with digital painting on top of that. So, 
beautiful example of a digital montage. Um, and here's an example, step by step, of a street scene using SketchUp modeling, integrating a photograph, the basic scene right here. What I did is I developed the SketchUp model of the street of a new sidewalk scene. And I um, basically found the same perspective view. I combined the two of them together into this uh, hybrid of the SketchUp model and the photograph. And then I went ahead and printed it out, drew on top of that, and came up with this hybrid, which is hand drawing. So this is about the end of my presentation. And uh, we're just about at 5.15. So uh, what I'll do is uh, basically stop there. And uh, uh, if you want me to go further, I can just one I think or two we have minutes. To, I think we have to call it there. Okay. But um, I just want to remind everybody that Jim is running a workshop tomorrow at 1.30 PM. So he'll be able to, to help you out and go through the rest of this. But a big round of applause for okay. Jim Waggett, please. Thanks.